You've seen his mechanics, but now it's time to reveal the full starting roster for the Chaos God of Magic and Deceit, Zinch, whose faction will be available in Total War Warhammer 3. Like the other Chaos Gods, Zinch's roster is demon heavy, but his leans heavily into magic and ranged units to make Zinch especially unique. So let's take a look at how his plan and roster all come together. Zinch's representative legendary lord when the game launches in early 2022 will be Kairos Fateweaver, a blue birdman demon who sees the future with his right head, sees the past with his left head, and sees the present about as well as Stevie Wonder at the DMV. Kairos's magical knowledge and capability is unsurpassed, but he's also madder than a hatter and wholly unpredictable on the battlefield. Supporting his forces with heavy magical support fire and crazy ostrich leg kicks capable of disemboweling the unsuspecting. Kairos's unique skills and abilities, though, are Fragments of Magic, which allows Kairos to acquire and equip fragments of magical spell lores, giving him access to several spells from that lore. Only one fragment at a time can be equipped, though, meaning you can only have access to one lore of magic at a time, but it is swappable. The Staff of Tomorrow, Kairos' powerful artifact, is the Staff of Tomorrow that reduces all his spell cooldowns, and his unique spell is the Gaze of Fate, which lets him paralyze a unit in place and prevents its movement while reducing its melee attack. Kairos, along with every other unit in Zinch's army, is protected by a Magical Barrier, a damage shield that regenerates quickly outside of combat and protects them against all harm, effectively giving them a second health bar. This makes hit-and-run tactics, especially with flyers and cavalry, particularly effective, along with allowing you to cycle out your troops mid-battle to recharge them. And these shields can be buffed and altered through technology and skills. For generic lords, Zinch fields the Exalted Lords of Change, or Diet Kairos. Behind the hideous face of every Lord of Change is a deeply intelligent and vengeful mind. They're like children playing with some gigantic anthill, poking it with a stick and laughing as its inhabitants try to defend it. Nothing pleases an exalted Lord of Change more than to see the world broken and then remade as they see fit. As well as being fierce melee combatants with awesome emu powers, exalted Lords of Change are powerful spellcasters. Wielding spells in a Zinch army fuels your ability to call upon the powers of the God of Magic, special army abilities that charge every time you use the Winds of Magic. Magic. These powerful effects can blitz enemies from the field, and since every Zinch Lord, most of their heroes, and even some standard units have access to spells, you'll be raking in those effects pretty quickly. Zinch's spellcasters specialize in either the standard lore of metal or the lore of Zinch, which focuses on pure offense. Four of its spells deal direct damage, while the others debuff their enemies to their doom. The Heralds or Zinch are horrors who have stabilized and been given greater power to serve their master's machinations. They're capable enough to direct lesser demons in battle, and you can even mount them on a disc of Zinch or a burning chariot. They're spellcasters like everyone else in this roster, so you can fly around and lob a burning death on anyone you find below. For heroes, you'll find the cultists of Zinch, clandestine worshippers marked by their strange masks, complicated rituals, and endless scheming. Never quite sure what the actual will of Zinch is, they're definitely a departure from other Chaos God cults who are constantly seeking various body parts and fluids for their god of choice. Spreading the ways of Zinch is massively important, and his schemes require sacrifices, blackmail, bribes, and most of all, knowledge. A cultist may work for years as part of a machine he barely understands, convinced of his own failure and expecting the mutations that come with it, without ever knowing if his schemes succeed or not because that's what it means to worship Zinch. They're the only unit in Zinch's army with access to the lore of fire, making them especially useful for a bit of battlefield damage and control as they ride around the top Chaos steeds. As they grow in power, they can even learn to summon demons directly from the Chaos realms, including Lords of Change themselves. And while these summons' time on the battlefield will be limited, their power will not be. The other hero option in Zinch's army is an iridescent horror, which is what happens when a pink horror is granted a bit of sanity and power. They're masters of the magical arts and powerful combatants, beating down even some champions of chaos. Their deadly skills are enhanced further with locuses of magic that allow them to greatly buff their allies at a moment's notice, or summon more through portals to the chaos realm. 
They have access to the lures of metal and zinch and can ride around on discs of zinch or burning chariots. When it comes to infantry, though, zinch only gets two options. Blue horrors, which are sulky and ill-tempered little brutes who sneer and grumble their way through a battle and are only barely classified as melee troops as they can vomit magic fire and use it as a precursor attack like demented Roman centurions. If their morale gets too low, they start to disintegrate on the spot instead of routing. But despite their short stature, they are still the last terrifying thing many a mortal has ever beheld. Blue horrors are joined by Forsaken of Zinch, who you've all seen before. They're forsaken, but lightly zinch flavored, and is the only dedicated foot-based melee unit with actual armor, you're probably going to see a lot of them in your battles, as they're also immune to psychology and attack with frenzy. And if that selection seems a bit limited, know it's by design, as it's when you see the missile infantry and magic that zinch really starts to shine. Pink horrors are identified by their flamingo pink skin and high-pitched squeals of laughter. Nothing makes a pink horror happier than casting spells, and when wounded, they'll exhale a final lunatic cackle before rapidly decomposing into an ectoplasmic blob of suggestively gyrating magic. Notably, pink horrors vomit burning hellfire and are better in melee than their blue brothers, making pink horrors an effective hybrid unit. Exalted pink horrors of Zinch are pink horrors that have proven sufficiently powerful, cunning, or daft enough to actually survive a few battles. They were golden trappings and consider themselves first among the lower servants of Zinch, but no other demon actually seems to care about them. Their even higher-pitched squeals of delight, though, suggest that at least these exalted pink horrors are having a good time. As a unit, they're better than pink horrors in every way, and their concentrated warp fire will outdamage even the celestial dragon crossbowmen of Cathay. Cathay, and you'll want to bring a lot of them as each additional unit makes your winds of magic recharge even faster in battle. For cavalry and chariots, you'll field Chaos Knights of Zinch. You've seen these guys before in Game 1, towering brutes atop immensely powerful Chaos steeds who lack the massive impact charge of standard cavalry but are far more effective in pitched battle. They cause fear and are heavily armored, and have high leadership so they won't run away. And when you combine that with Zinch's power barrier, they become tanks so awesome you'll almost forget they're a reskin. Doom Knights of Zinch are the same guys, but more awesome because they took up cloud surfing. They would be a wondrous sight to behold on the battlefield if their coming didn't always pretend death and, as their namesake suggests, doom. The discs they ride are the demonic steeds of Zinch, bizarre creations that are neither demon nor construction, but a nightmarish blend of the two. Discs fly above the ground, skimming gently forward upon the winds of magic, and are far from defenseless as they will also lash out with bolts of magical fire or manifest whirling tentacles and ripping claws to slash at any enemy that comes too close. Think of Doom Knights as ridiculously powerful flying shock cavalry who trade their armor and defense of grounded Chaos Knights for more speed and power. Burning chariots of Zinch hurtle across the realms of chaos like incandescent meteors. As they blaze through the heavens of the mortal world, chariots of Zinch are commonly mistaken for comets, which are seen as omens of bad things to come, which is actually based on a very real historical rhyme. These things a comet brings, war, famine, and the death of kings. With an exalted flamer aboard, burning chariots are among the strongest ranged weapons in Warhammer, able to attack and disengage with extremely high speed. But this mobility and power is offset by a low ammo count. Think dragon breath attacks with limited charges. For monsters and beasts, Zinch fields Chaos Furies, yowling shards of malevolent energy with little in the way of actual intelligence. Furies swarm at the edge of battles and avoid the thickest fighting if they can, and it's only when they sight a wounded victim that they descend as a wailing mass from which few escape. These Furies trade the Frenzy of Corn for the Barrier of Zinch, which makes them more effective at hit-and-run tactics as they have more health. They're cheap and good for counterattacks and flanking thanks to Vanguard deployment, but you'll be upgrading out of them rather quickly to get Screamers of Zinch, glimmering sky shards that ride upon the winds of magic as a bird glides upon the breeze, except that they scream in endless agony the entire time. So swift and agile are Screamers that they are highly sought after as steeds. However, their instinctive nature 
nature to consume the souls of anything they cross makes this problematic for any would-be space cowboys. Lightweight and unarmored, they are still powerful once locked in melee combat, acting as Zinch's equivalent of early game cavalry. But you'll need to constantly cycle charge them in and out of a fight to keep their charge bonus high and make sure their barrier has time to recharge. The spawn of Zinch are chaos spawn, caused by Zinch. With a low model count and a lack of defense stats, this unit can't really hold a line and is meant to charge in and melee enemies they come across, just like they did in the last two games. The boringness of Chaos Spawn is offset by Lords of Change, potent spellcasters who blast the enemies of Zinch with bolts of multicolored fire or unravel the minds of any spellcaster from the inside. Although a Lord of Change elects to use magic and trickery to further its ends, they're fearsome fighters as well, because seriously, you don't want to try and fight a cassowary, they will mess you up. Lords of Change are full-fledged spellcasters as well as devastating single-entity monsters, and also they can fly. All of this is available in one affordable and vaguely bird-shaped package. With certain campaign technologies, they unlock more powerful spells, and even though they won't be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bloodthirster, they can easily wipe out many mortal units. Flamers of Zinch are faster than you'd think and expel gaseous ichor through the fungoid skirt at their base, which is a fancy way of saying they fart out their dresses with such force that they can fly. And they do that all while throwing rolling fire out of their sleeves. It's not really fire though, in the traditional sense, but raw chaos energy that warps reality and reduces anything it hits to a wiggling puddle of transmutated flesh. Much like Pink Horrors, Flamers need careful placement to ensure they have maximum damage output, but can absolutely annihilate anything in their path when placed correctly. As a later game powerful monster unit, Flamers can also hold their own in melee combat, especially after applying a few sick burns to their victims. But after insulting your mother, they also apply warp fire in melee, making any additional support fire against their targets very effective. Exalted Flamers of Zinch are bigger, hotter, single-entity versions of regular Flamers, able to conjure up great billowing sheets of warp magic or hurl bolts of sorcerous change that can make the very air sizzle when passing by. They're likely to be the most powerful ranged attacker you'll see on the battlefield. And yes, again, that does include siege engines. This is mainly because exalted flamers can spray warp fire in a cone ahead of them, which is extra deadly against formations or single entity units. And the warp flame debuff increases damage taken from fire attacks for anything that survives, weakening them against almost the entire Zinch roster. But again, they have low ammo, so know that inevitably they will wind up in melee, where they're only so-so. Unlike the dreaded Soul Grinder of Zinch. When a demon's physical body is slain, he can surrender his true name to the Forge of Souls, and be reborn as a mighty warp metal hulk, the Soul Grinder whose clanking treads shake the ground with every step and is devilishly fast for a creature its size, able to scuttle as swiftly as a horse gallops. And unlike other gods' soul grinders, Zinches can hurl long-range anti-magic spears at targets that have magical attacks alongside armor-piercing damage. And that is Zinch's roster. It's, uh, different, for sure, all flying, all magical, hit-and-run tactics with undoubtedly lots of macro and more than a bit of the old cycle charging. Zinch is shaping up to be the power gamer faction, with a rather high threshold of player ability, meaning that if you're coming into Warhammer 3 for the first time, I would not pick Zinch. But only time will tell how effective all his Sky Dancers actually will be in battle. With claws, flames, discs, and pulsating pink masses though all wrapped in magic, one can only assume that this is all somehow going according to Zinch's plans. But if a cultist asked him to elaborate further, he'd just leave. <laughs>